He wanted to know what went wrong. A handful of us got shot up with different versions of that serum. It wasn't long before it was only me left. For the next 30 years, they experimented on me. Hello again to all and welcome back into the channel for this week's review of Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode 5 simply titled Truth. So we're just going to keep this review short and concise and just kind of dive into the manner and way in which these heavy revelations and circumstances unfold before our very eyes. So first off we get this high octane fight between John Walker, Sam and Bucky that only serves to set the stage for what comes next in this episode. Now as you should know, action has been in Marvel's wheelhouse for quite some time and even though they do manage to use it when necessary, I was really impressed more so by the way in which it was shot and also the personal perspective that you get from each character. And as much flack that I might have given John in my past videos, it's just like what Sam says later on about the SHIELD's legacy. It's just complicated, you know, there's just really no two ways about it. So take the scene where John is in front of the military board where he gives that fiery response after being told he was going to be discharged. John shouting at them that they quote unquote made him gives us a better look into his mentality and in some part of him he still thinks and feels he's doing the right thing. So that the scene where John meets with Lamar's family just happens to add an extra layer of conviction to his cause for killing Carly's partner who just happened to look up to Cap even though he wasn't responsible for what happened to Lamar. And it's evident from the scene of him building the shield that he has intentions of stopping the real person responsible for Lamar's death. However, if Lamar was a close family member to you, wouldn't you want to have the same closure that John gave them? So yes, it is those small details that just kind of stand out for me and gives his character just a little bit more depth than I initially thought was even possible. But the bulk of this episode, or at least half of it, takes place as we are given another in-depth look into Sam's personal affairs as well as his point of view of the whole situation of taking Cap's shield, not to mention Bucky's feelings about it as well. This of course happens while Sam and Bucky fix up the family boat, which serves as a means to allow the two to get closer as friends. Now if you paid any attention to the fight at the beginning, there were moments where Bucky saved Sam and vice versa, so the bond that the two share gets even more development as well. Not to mention the death wish that Bucky has in front of with Sam's sister. But it's these moments that we'll look back on and ultimately need to be told at this point in Marvel canon that will become a nice point of reference for these characters placing even more faith in each other as we see them more and more. Now the scene with Isaiah Bradley sitting across from Sam and telling his story. This of course is one of the most difficult scenes to not just watch but pull off and not make it feel forced or overdone. And by the way, if you didn't know, this is rooted in the comics and is also the inspiration for the name of this episode. Isaiah's story mirrors the Tuskegee Airmen who were injected with syphilis but were lied to about the treatment and is an obvious stain in American history, which surprised me that Marvel took the time to somewhat bring this to our attention. Now I think it is key and somewhat plays a part in the why Sam hasn't taken up Cap's shield yet. Sam just wants to be sure he is making the right decision with the shield. And given how Bucky feels about it and how Isaiah looks at the shield and also given the fact that John Walker feels entitled to the shield, what Sam says to Bucky towards the end of this entry let us know that Sam will make a decision based on what he feels is right. Plus he's training for it too so there's that. So Bucky confronts Zemo at the Sokovia Memorial and has the Domalaji take Zemo into custody to be held at the raft but I don't see him staying there too long. And before parting ways Bucky does as a favor of Ayo which has got to be a new set of wings for Sam like of the vibranium variety right? Now the woman that shows up after John Walker's verdict, Val with the long name played by Seinfeld alumni. Now while I can tell you who she is in the comics and to be honest there isn't much to go on with her source material. How she will be used in the show well that's something we'll have to let play out together. Plus she's definitely placed at a point in the series as someone who might be important later on in the MCU. Cause given the whole debacle with the WandaVision theories. <laughs> I think this would be a very prudent statement for future references when it comes to obscure comic characters becoming a part of the MCU. And now in closing, I think now more than ever that either Sarah is a deep cover agent or she's the power broker for sure. I mean given the fact that she contacts George St. Pierre's character Batrock means she's culpable in Sam's initial encounter with him at the beginning of the series and based on Batrock and Carly's deal the finale is stacking up to be a good one. Well that just about wraps it up, stay tuned in the content metal for more reviews just like this one. 
And until then, see you then.